Hello again everyone, my name is Gareth Woolcock, I am a gameplay and UI programmer on Tanx, and this is the third video in our series. Now, in the first video we covered Tanx, the project, its history, and showed you a little bit of gameplay and some of the features that we'd implemented. In the second video we went more in depth into how we used multiplayer services to implement our networked gameplay. Now in this third video, we'll be going into how you can set up the project yourself after downloading it from the Asset Store. So without further ado, let's get started. First thing, of course, is that you need Unity. Now you may already have Unity downloaded and installed, but not all versions of Unity are made equal. Uh, Tanks was built in Unity 5.4.1. So please ensure that you have at least that installed before you attempt to import the project. Next thing, we need to link the project up to Unity services. Now you can do this via your Unity account on, in your browser, but a much easier way to do it is to let Unity automatically create that profile and link it to your project for you. You'll see here on the project creation screen, which should look very familiar to you, I'm logged into my Unity account. Because of that, I have two additional options available to me in the screen. The first is to enable Unity Analytics by default, which we want to do because Tanks uses Unity Analytics. And the second is to link it to our organization. Now I've already set those up. We just need to give the project a name and create. And what will happen is not only will the project be created locally, but it will also be created in Unity services and automatically linked into this project so that we don't have to worry about that. It's all done up front and streamlines things quite a bit. Now that our project's created, we need to import our assets. This can be done via the Unity Asset Store. You'll find a link to the game project in the description below this video. Simply click that, download the package, uh, the Asset Store will talk you through importing it, and you will see all of the assets are here. Now that we have our assets, we need to do some project setup. Unfortunately, there are project settings that are not carried over in the asset package. Uh, we need to set those up manually. Now don't panic. Uh, there is no need to freeze frame this video and frantically scribble down the settings I'm about to show you. Included in the package will be a supplementary document that will cover detailed setup. So simply be aware that there is additional setup. I'm going to show you where and then check the supplementary document for the details. Firstly, we need to set up our input settings. You'll see we have several settings in our input manager. Uh, if these are not set up correctly, your game may not control correctly, especially not on mobile where we have a virtual joystick. If these are not set up, well, the game won't know how to parse input and you won't be able to control anything. So be sure that these are all set up correctly. Secondly, we need to set up our layers. Uh, Tanks uses these layers for collision detection. If they are not set up correctly, well, things will collide where they're not meant to, uh, or go through things that they are not meant to go through. So ensure that all of these layers are set up correctly. We then need to set up our physics. Uh, Tanks uses a custom gravity setting. And then using those layers that we've previously set up, we have a series of collision settings, a collision mask set up uh, to ensure that things collide correctly. Next to last, we need to set up our player settings. Obviously, all of our supported platforms can be deployed to from this one project, uh, but be sure that all of the settings 
the build settings for your chosen platform are set up correctly. Uh, otherwise, you may have issues deploying. Uh, for the purposes of this demo, um, I, as you can see, am on OS X, so I'll be messing around with these settings here. Last thing, you need to set up your scenes in your build settings. Here you can see I have them already populated, but it's very easy to set that up yourself. Simply do a type search for scenes, select them all, drag and drop them into your build settings, and just be sure that splash screen is set as your first scene. That is the formal entry scene. The game can be started from the lobby scene, but the splash screen is the formal entry point. So just ensure that one of those two is sitting at the top so that Unity knows to start with that scene. With all of those settings done, we can now move on to our services. If we click on this little cloud button here or go to Window Services, we'll get our Unity Services window. Listed here are all the services that are available to link to for our project. We have here Unity Ads, which allows you to display adverts in your game in exchange for a little bit of revenue share. We have Unity Analytics, which allows you to collect data on the game and create reports. As you can see, we have that enabled by default. We have Unity Cloud Build, which allows you to build off-site in the cloud and also allows you to build for platforms that you may not be able to deploy to. For instance, building to an iOS device from a Windows machine. Uh, it also allows you to download directly to one of these devices without having to sideload it via the standard means. So that's very quick and very convenient. We have Unity Collaborate, uh, which is a project sharing service. Uh, this allows you to share all of your project files into the cloud and allows all collaborators to download and upload the latest versions of those files. It's a good way of ensuring that everyone is up to date on the project and that all the latest things are not only available to everyone, but also backed up safely in the cloud. Unity Cloud Build can also source its files from Collaborate, so that makes things very quick and convenient. Uh, performance reporting is only available in Unity Pro or Unity Plus. Uh, that allows you to receive reports of crash logs from your users, which is very useful when trying to troubleshoot uh, issues once your game is out in the wild. We have in-app purchasing, which is exactly what it says on the tin. It is Unity's built-in interface for creating IAP and handling IAP in your game. Finally, we have Unity Multiplayer, and we'll need this to be set up before we can continue building the game. So I'm going to click on this, and you'll see I'm taken to this tab in the editor. Now, we have not yet enabled multiplayer for this project because it's a brand new project. In order to do so, we will click on Go to Dashboard here. And it will take us to the multiplayer page of our project. You'll see that Tanks Test, which is what I've named my project, is already created. Uh, clicking there is simply linked me to it. Now, in order to set up multiplayer, all we need is to provide one piece of information, and that is the maximum number of players we want per game session, or per room. We know that Tanks has a default value of 4, so I'm going to punch that in there, a maximum of 4 players per game, and hit save. And once all of that is saved, we're ready to go. Unity multiplayer is go. And in fact, if we go back to our editor and hit Refresh Configuration, you'll see now that it's populated with all the settings for our multiplayer. So there we go. We're linked up. We're ready to use Unity Multiplayer. Excellent. Now, I'm going to go into my first scene here, which is Splash Screen. 
and I'm just going to ensure that everything works correctly. So we've loaded up the scene, everything looks good, we've got no compile errors. I'm going to hit play here, and yes, we've started up and we're able to go to our main menu and everything seems to be working. Excellent. And now we can start playing around in our scripts. But what if we want to test what we've changed? Uh, deploying a standalone version of the game to multiple devices to quickly test a change is not really a very efficient use of time. Fortunately, there is a way around this. Firstly, I'm going to go to my build settings and then my player settings. And in my standalone build settings, I'm going to ensure that when it's compiled, it plays as a windowed game. And I'm going to keep it at a fairly low resolution so that we can keep a lot of windows on screen at once. Right, you'll see that it was set to default to full screen. I've unchecked that and just put in a custom resolution. And now when I build my game and run my game, it's displayed in a 640x480 window. Why do this? Well, here we have a standalone build of our game. I'm going to load it up in editor as well. There we go. And I'm going to create a game here in editor. And then I'm going to go to my standalone version And you can see my game is visible in the server browser in the standalone game. And now you can see I can join that lobby. And both instances of the game that are running on my one device are part of the same lobby. I can now start the game and test out my multiplayer functionality on this one uh, device. The nice thing is that although these are both running on the same computer, all network traffic is still going via the Unity Relay server. So this traffic from this instance is running through the server and then coming back to this instance. That means that even though I'm running it on the same device, I'm getting a realistic indication of the network behavior. I'm just going to quit this here and exit. Excellent. So now you can see how we set up the game and how you can test it on a single device while still getting representative uh, behavior. Now that's fine and good, but what's the point of having the project all to yourself if you can't tweak it a little? Uh, I'm going to walk you through a very simple tweak just to show you how easy it is. And in order to do that, I need to go to my lobby scene. What we're going to do is we're going to decrease the maximum number of players in a session. Now, if you've watched the second video in our series, you'll know that all of our interfaces with the Unity services are via our network manager here. So the network manager is where we'll go to lower our value. Okay, so here you can see in our network manager, we've got two instances here where the maximum size is set. What I'm going to do is lower it from a maximum of four to a maximum of two. So I'm going to set maximum match size to two there and maximum players there to two. Excellent. Now, for robustness sake, I'm also going to change it in the services. You'll remember that when we first set up multiplayer, we allowed it to have a maximum of four players per session. Let's lower that. So I'm going to go back to my services here. I'm 
I'm going to go to multiplayer. I'm going to go to my dashboard here. And I'm going to decrease my maximum players per room to two and hit save. Excellent. That's that. Now I'm just going to save my project. And now I'm going to build it. And now Tanks is running. Now, let's create a game. Remember earlier that I said that the game could be launched from the lobby scene. So, as you can see, we've just hit play there and everything is fine. I'm going to create my game here again. And I'm going to link in from my standalone build here. And first thing you'll notice that this used to be four slots. It is now dropped to two. I'm going to join the lobby. And there are our two players. And if we fire up another instance of the game, You will see that if we attempt to search for the game, we have no servers available because the room is full. If on this instance I leave the game and then attempt to refresh, you'll see it's now available and I can join in. So that's a very easy tweak that you can do, and I encourage you to dig into the code and find more tweaks. Now, that concludes our video series on tanks. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been informative. Uh, please, once again, feel free to download the game from the Apple App Store, the Google Play Store, or the Windows Store via the links below, and play it and have fun with your friends. Um, and download the project and uh, try it out for yourself. This project exists to show you how a real-life multiplayer game is made. So please take advantage of that, um, download the project, mess around, allow it to educate you in how to implement a multiplayer game for yourself. Uh, my name is Gareth Wilcock. Thank you very much for watching.